Hey everyone, this video is a partly an announcement to let you know that my new folk feature film WFH, or Work From Home, is now finally available on YouTube. I'll put that link in the description below. And I suggest checking out the film before watching this video, because what I wanted to do here was uh, to talk a little bit about the making of the film. You know, this is part, I've heard this described as part of the folk filmmaking movement that uh, filmmakers should provide uh, some behind the scenes detail or production info about the making of their film in order to uh, give, you know, new and aspiring and emerging filmmakers sort of a, uh, an idea of, um, you know, what went into what it went into making these movies and hopefully, I guess, to give them some uh, inspiration for their own projects. So here I am with that. Well, let's see. Work from home. How did this project start? Uh, it was very spur of the moment, a very casual uh, kind of project. It started as, a, and I mentioned this briefly in an earlier video, and I'm going to get into more detail here. It started as an outgrowth of another feature-length project that I was uh, embarking on a month or so ago. And what happened with that was a, a couple of things. Uh, but for right now, I'll just kind of give the short version of this. Basically, I ran into a situation where the, uh, I ran into some obstacles in getting that film made and I didn't want to slow down. I didn't want to get hung up or tripped up on that. You know, I, again, it's this idea of, I don't want to focus on what I can't do at the moment. I want to focus on what I can do. So when I thought about it that way, I had this idea of, uh, making a film that would take a kind of a naturalistic observational approach, which I've really been drawn to lately, and to look at, like, well, what do I know? Well, somebody's worked a, uh, in the age of remote employment, of working from home. Now, what happened, uh, I, I don't want to get into too many specifics about just, uh, you know, the nature of what tripped me up with this other project at the moment. And I am, as I, as I said before, I am still working on it, but what what has uh, happened is that I've, I've been kind of thinking of it in a slightly different direction. And here's why. With the earlier project, I, I realized that I was still thinking in terms of making a more traditional feature film. And that just didn't interest me as much. That was a big part of it. It just didn't interest me as much to take that approach. And part of the reason for that is as I was running into these obstacles and some, some things involving like casting and things like that, I realized it's these same problems that can uh, stall a production. And I really didn't want to get hung up on that. I said, I, you know, this is, these are the, the, the same problems that I've dealt with even just making short films. I'm not even talking about with, you know, other feature projects. I'm just talking about even with short films. And so I said, you know, I, I, I just need to stop, you know, press pause on that for a minute and I need to look at what I can do. And th so that's how, that's how, uh, WFH was born. Now to get to the actual production itself, it's, there's really not that much to, to really report on. It was a pretty simple shoot. I mean, really the vast majority of it, I would, I would say probably 90% took place in a single day over a period of maybe four or five hours. And what I did was basically to go through what this uh, person's day would be like working from home. This, this uh, character, you know, that I'm playing in the film, um, you know, to just go through the day and to try to capture something of the sense of inertia that comes from, you know, working from home when you're, when you're, um, workplace is your home and vice versa and you you know wake up and kind of go right down to your office and you know your your everything from having breakfast in the morning having lunch you know uh to just you know being in your own living room all kind of blends together into this sort of virtual work day so i i followed these events through now my uh as, as far as shooting goes it was very straightforward i used um the same camera that I used to record all these videos here on YouTube, my Google Pixel 5 smartphone. Uh, I filmed it, you know, again, almost, I would say the majority of the film, certainly, uh, probably 90, 95% of it I shot 
myself um, using this uh, using this camera uh, on a tripod. Every every shot was locked down on a tripod. Uh, that, I like that that kind of very stable, steady framing. So that that is a choice. Not it's not just a necessity uh, because I'm also acting in a film. It's also that's a choice that I uh, would would have made either way. And uh, it was shot mostly in sequence. Um, I'm trying to think what else there is to say about it. it you know, it was, it, like I said, it was done pretty straightforward. There are very few retakes, you know, very few scenes really needed to be reshot. Uh, there might have been a couple where I thought of some little piece of action or some little bit of business to do in this shot that I would, uh, you know, I would go back and retake it so that I could, I could add that in. It would be smoother. There was, um, now... That's another thing I should mention. This this was an improvised film, and when I say improvised, I don't uh, I don't mean that it was just entirely made up on the spot. I mean I had a very you know I had an idea of how this was going to how it was going to flow, how the uh, scene you know what, what the scenes would basically consist of, but the improvisation comes in when you're actually there on the on the set you know actually shooting, and you really find at least for me, I really find a film like this in the shooting and editing. Uh, it's a film that, you know, I can have the kind of conceptual idea, okay, we're following somebody working from home for a day. There, there's your idea. It's then how do you take that and and film it? And so, so it was an improvised film. Um, and so, like I said, most of it was shot in a single day. Now, I did... Okay, so my rough cut of the film ran 55 minutes. And I decided to... Uh, cut it, cut it down. I mean, as I was watching it, I was trying to tighten, tighten the shots. Now, when I say that, if you you know see the film, there there are a lot of you know long takes. There's again, I'm trying to build this kind of uh, tension that arises out of the just the inertia, the nothingness of these long stretches of time um, of working from home. Uh, again, it's this kind of sense of you know time just blurring together, running together. But I, I still wanted it to have the film to have its own internal rhythms. So part of that is again what I found through the editing. After I had all this footage that I shot, you know, I initially put together. I basically I sequenced the shots. The, I, I put the shots that I was going to use into a sequence in more or less, you know, raw form, and uh, assembled a rough cut, which was fifty-five minutes. And then I went to work editing this down. And what I realized in the process of editing was that there were still a couple of other um, uh, scene, you know, little scenes that I wanted to get. So what I did was I went back for a second day and I, I filmed uh, three or four new uh, little scenes. And uh, my wife helped me shoot those. But the... Uh, so, so this... This this project was um, I, I say in the in the uh, ending credits you know I put in some information about how it was shot and and how long it took and I say it was shot over two days which is you know which is true uh, but I would say that the the vast majority of it was shot in a single day um, okay so that's that now of course the budget was zero dollars I didn't spend anything. Um, to make this. I, I didn't put out any kind of, there were no expenses to make this. Um, you know, I used anything that was in the film was, were things that I already, already had, you know, the camera. Um, what else can I say? So, oh, well, I guess, you know, to return to the editing, right? So I had, uh, this new footage that I shot, took all of it, combined it in, continued to tighten and kind of whittle down the, 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 the you know, shots that I had. And my final version ended up running uh, 43 minutes. Now, I knew from the start that I wanted this to be on the shorter side of feature length. And again, using kind of the uh, guidelines of the folk filmmaking movement, uh, you know, they cite the Academy um, definition of feature film, which is 40 minutes or over. And I think this is a, I said this in another video, but I'll say it again. I think this is a really interesting thing about folk filmmaking is that you can take uh, you can have features that run, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 minutes. And by the conventions of, you know, Hollywood, the theatrical feature model, this would probably be considered too short to be shown as a standalone program in a theater. 
you know, where, where you've got people paying for their, you know, evening's entertainment. But that's the great thing about this type of filmmaking is you don't have to worry about any of that. There are no commercial considerations because you, you, the movie's being released for free on YouTube. So you don't have to worry about, oh, well, people are going to expect at least uh, a two-hour movie for their, you know, $15 or whatever it costs, you know, to go see it in a theater. It's, no, this is a uh, film that's available for free on YouTube. And as filmmakers, we're free to make these films any length that we feel is right for the project. And I liked the, I liked very much working in the feature length model again, because it gave me a lot more breathing room to, uh, to build this, uh, you know, the, the sense of um, time and atmosphere that I was going for with this movie. Uh, I, I realized that if I had done this as a short, it would have been a lot less effective, I think, because there simply would not have been enough time for uh, at least what I hope it will have the effect for the viewer of kind of immersing yourself in in the uh, in in the in the time as it's experienced by the character in the movie. Uh, so in that sense, I thought you know well I I I do want to keep it on like the shorter side of a of a feature film, uh, just because I think that it was all I needed to. Um, get this particular idea across. So anyway, it came in at 43 minutes. I, w I watched it again. I, you know, tightened a few things here, there. Uh, that was my, and then I kind of signed off on the uh, final cut. Now, something I do, and part of the reason um, it took me probably a week, I, I think I, I think a week or so that I kind of sat on this uh, film before releasing it to YouTube. Part of the reason for that is, uh, well, really the, the big reason for it is that I like to I like to give a project time to sit before I release it, and the reason is I find that when I am uh, editing something, I'm so I'm so immersed in it that it it can be hard to really step back and see the film, even you know remotely in the way that anybody looking at it for the first time will. Now, of course, as the filmmaker, you you can never separate yourself that much from the film and just by virtue of having watched it as many times as you do through editing, you can never fully divorce yourself from um, how familiar you are with it. But what I find is that just stepping back for a week is all the time that I really need to approach it again with like, like a, you know, a set of clear eyes, basically. Um, you know, just to take a, a fresh perspective on it and see how it plays, you know, after I've, I've kind of had time to just... Um, you know, just to, just to put it aside for a week and, and see how I feel. So as I rewatch it, I think I think there might have been... Uh, I, I don't know. I, I can't remember if I... I don't think there was anything that I went back and... I mean, anything I would have done to it at that point would have been so minimal, but I, I really can't think that there was anything at all that I changed when I went back to it. I think I looked at it again and said, yeah, this is still... Uh, I'm still satisfied with this. I think it turned out... Personally, I think it turned out pretty well. I mean, it was, uh, like I said, a film that very much came together in the shooting and editing, uh, you know, from this kind of general concept that I had. So I felt like it achieved that. It was close to how I had envisioned it. And when everything came together, I was, I was happy with how it turned out. So I watched it, you know, watched it and then, um, you know, rendered the uh, final version and uh, put it up on YouTube. So uh, that's why it took me a while to release this. I mean, when I say a while, I just mean basically a week, week and a half, whatever that I sat on it. Uh, I, I just do that because um, I like to come back to it with a fresh perspective. Because once it's out there, it's out there. That's my feeling. Once the film is out there, it's out there. Now, I could, of course, always go back and, you know, tweak something here or there and change it. But I don't especially like to go back to projects. Like, for me... Once I'm done with a film, I've signed off on it, and I release it, you know, whatever that looks like, just putting it out there, I like for that to be it, you know. So that's that's why I guess I I may have, um, you know, I, I take a little time just to kind of let things sit and, uh, you know, take another look at it before putting it out there. But, um, you know, I think that's about it. You know, I'll just say this, because I, I didn't, want to get into too many details at the beginning of this video for anybody watching, you know, I'm going to, this is just a quick, um, diversion from work from home from WFH. But what, what I was saying about this other feature that I had begun making, you know, this, 
as, as I've kept saying in these videos, if you watch these, you, you already know this, that I've basically been out of the loop making feature since 2003. Uh, when I was a kid, you know, 12, 13, I started making, I made a lot of short films, you know, with the, with, and then I made, um, I started trying to make features. And I think I made about six or seven feature length projects from like between like 96, 97 and 2003 when I finished my, what was my last feature. And what, as I said, when I came back uh, thinking about this again after kind of, uh, you know, exploring the folk film movement and seeing a lot of the really interesting work out there, what I have realized is that the beauty of this type of filmmaking is that we can really move beyond the kind of traditional uh, narrative filmmaking models, which, uh, let's be honest, they can, it can get pretty expensive, you know, that to, do, to really do a film with lots of, uh, lots of characters, lots of locations and actions, it can, it can get very complicated. Now, by all means, you can do it. I'm not saying that you should, you know, shouldn't try to do it or anything like that. I'm just saying that for me, like working without any, basically not having anyone else to, to work with, I have to be a little bit more, um, you know, I have to kind of con take those considerations uh, in when I'm thinking about a project. And what I found was that thinking, kind of simplifying things and trying to strip it down to what I could do, I actually found myself getting more excited by the prospect of doing like a, a one person feature film. Uh, so to me, it's, you know, again, this is, I don't view it in any way as like a compromise or anything. I, I think of it as opening up whole possibilities that I hadn't even thought about that frankly are more interesting to me at this point. And, uh, one of the one of the kind of collateral effects of having made WFH is that now I'm finding myself thinking about all these other ideas that I can do as a one person feature film that I probably would not have really thought of before, you know, but this is the beauty of just uh, all these different alternative approaches that exist and being able to see them in action by watching these folk films that are on YouTube and uh, and just by actually making a film, you know, that's the thing. And this is something everybody says, and I'm just gonna say it too, is you just have to get out and make a film. That's really how it happens. That's how you do this and how you learn. And, you know, even though I've, uh, you know, been making short films for, so many short films for so long, I found that it wasn't until I actually gave myself the experience of making this feature that it opened up all these ideas of how I could, uh, you know, make more features. So. Uh, I, I have to say thank you uh, to all of the folk filmmakers, the truly independent filmmakers, uh, for all the inspiration. You know, I dedicate WFH to them uh, because I, I really have to say it was their inspiration to get back to making features, but not just making features, but thinking about how I could do it with what I have. And that was, uh, that's how this all came together. So thank you. And... I hope that if you watch WFH, you'll in, you find it of interest. I hope that you'll enjoy it. I hope that um, if you're thinking about making a feature film yourself, I hope it can just be one more example that, you know, to remind you that it can be done. Anyway, I think that's uh, long enough about, uh, about all this. I hope that this is of some use. I hope that it helps, uh, hope that it contributes in some way to the folk, the, the, to the, uh, folk filmmaking project of, you know, sh sharing how these films are made and maybe inspiring someone to do it themselves. Anyway, thank you for watching this and I will talk to you later.